Gergely, Ágás Iva Molnár and Peter Kukus, who are exhibiting here in the other book of Stefan Wood, as Stefan, yeah. by virtue of the curatorial work of the team of Tumago. So I present you, like Barbara Fischer, Patrick Zobel, and Wolfgang Steiner. Um, so these photographers are all well established in the Hungarian art scene and abroad as well. They have the common interest to capture reality, but their realities are slightly different from ours. That's why their work looks like they attempting the truth, the photographic truth. So their method is to use everyday life's actors, um, human beings, ordinary objects, animals, plants, given circumstances, and picture them in an unusual composition, giving a complexity to the subjective image record. They are specialists to render the common details in a personal manner and to draw our attention to unbelievable stories while they parallel constructing communion and distances with the spectator. Their photographic words are substantially political, because of their medium and because of their subject matter. Luckily, <laughs> <laughs> luckily here I have to stop my traditional uh, prosaic opening speech because we just received some extraordinary subversive news. The destabilized ground of Hungary was ultimately enough fertile to nourish self-esteem and consciousness. And today, the habitual silence of the Hungarian society was broken. The people of our small, many times broken country woke up and revolted against autocracy. The rebellion spread out immediately and created an overall positive ambience. Everything is started in small villages, where the hungry, blackland country folks took their speeds and heads and brutally captured their direct oppressors, the big-bellied majors and deputies, and locked them up in the garret of closed-down schools and pharmacies. <laughs> After abandoning their prisoners without heating, they headed toward the big cities of the region and set on fire the town halls to fight the rich managers and dealers in warm circumstances. Communal workers, who did actually forced labor for approximately 150 euros per month from public money, took the uniforms of their guardians and forced them to run naked on the fields of the deputies, which happened to be clear-cut by them just to be with them. They all joined the new army of chefs, cooks, and waiters, and reformed the nouvelle cuisine from the garbage. The latter can be mined freely by anyone, without penalty now. The students, in general, rebelled against the state-appointed school directors and threw into the Danube the new basic syllabus. The high schools were turned into chain smoker rooms and swinger clubs to get them more interested students as possible. The universities were closed down and put on sale on the internet for investors from Asia. Some PhD students were able to steal the national crown jewelry from the parliament, hijack an airplane and fly directly to Cuba to present our national symbols as an offering for the older Castro. This act was appreciated with the ownership of a small cigar manufacturer. The public media workers, the few who have been left in their job, trussed up their superiors and forced them to listen and broadcast the program of Club Radio. The time of self-censorship is over, and all journalists have to sign a contract that they will write the truth. Nothing but the truth. The ruthless people are not chased away anymore from the city center, but they became the responsible national and departmental museums. Their decision was to move there immediately and construct their own exhibition, which represents and commemorates the last hundred years of their extrusion from the society. So they had to destroy the beautiful and sophisticated artworks, or sell them to American billionaires, of the airy halls and rooms of national representation in order to have enough space to show their own life stories. 
constantly trembling on the edge of survival. The paramilitary soldiers of the Hungarian Guard are protecting the banks now from the crowd and organizing night watch with, night watch with torches, surveying the suspicious ex-government related fellows. Those who are already captured are taken to the basement of the Opera House via an old tunnel lately used on the 2nd of January by the Prime Minister to avoid the confrontation with the oppositional demonstrators. Ministers, directors of public institutions, state secretaries and conservative advisors, they are all crying for mercy between the packed decor of Luger's Castle and Don Giovanni. They are judged for lifelong work at the Hortobal to renew ecological health in the era. Their children were taken away as well and have been as well and have been sent to normalization camp, where one of their first lessons will be to learn about their father's dirty affairs. The or orphans of the revolution will be kindly adopted by the Habsburg family. During that time, contemporary artists are collecting in huge trucks the recently built monuments, that one of national cooperation, the two rules, the mythological bird of all Hungarians, and the newly commissioned statues of nationalist writers. They torn down all of them and reused them as material to build a new contemporary public sculpture in, for, in front of the parliament to evoke the cultural damage of the recent years. But wait a moment, where is the parliament? It was eroded by the families of lenders who were impoverished <coughs> by their mortgage. Those people decided to appropriate the huge, fake flamboyant building and deconstruct it stone by stone, uh, the signboard sign of low authentication machines. The rest of the building are transported to empty parking lots and towers and small palazzos have been raised there to lodge the traveling Romans. <laughs> Please feel empathy with us. And if our, re our reality is too prosaic, do not dare to look for other ones as do these photographers. And always be prepared for the revolution. Mm -hmm. <laughs>